Good morning and welcome. Picture Radio News Hour. Joe and Jason on this good Friday. Uh, hope it finds you well out there. Uh, happy Easter. I uh, got Easter coming on, on Sunday and uh, hopefully you get to surround yourself with some family, loved ones, people that are important to you. Um, and, uh, you know, take it easy. Right? Take a load of maybe... Forget about all the bad stuff we, we talk about all the time and uh, just in, in, enjoy company and, and giving glory to the man upstairs. Our toll-free number today, 800-951-0592. I guess, well, I guess that's the number every day. Uh, we are going to close early, so if you're going to get an order in, do it in the next few hours, or you can always go to allamericangold.com uh, and order through the shopping cart. Uh, that's that's always up 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And, and Jason, uh, the markets are closed uh, all over most of the world anyway, and we had economic data out. We had inflation data out. Kind of, you know, I guess, according to the Fed, this is the most important piece of data that they care about, right? The inflation data. Uh, and having it on the day where the markets are closed, kind of interesting, kind of odd. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, we did have it. Now, gold closed at an all-time record high yesterday. The markets open. For about an hour, well, not about an hour, for an hour after that. And gold is now at a new all-time record high, $2,234. And we're going to get ready for Monday. What can we expect uh, to happen on Monday? And, Jason, uh, based on the inflation data today, kind of just like we, we told you it was going to look like. Month over month, they, they said that, it, you know, it was it was hotter than they'd like. Uh, but in line with, with their expectations of three-tenths of one percent, and they did revise January's number, this was a February number, by the way, just, you know, you may want to know that. Uh, they did revise January's number four-tenths of a percent. So they made January a little hotter. Uh, February came in at three-tenths. But, of course, you know, they don't care about that. You know, ah, forget the headlines. I mean, we don't care about that. Uh, the core PCE deflator, so this is one of their, uh, the deflator numbers are their low, low numbers, right? You know, again, I'll call this the academic inflation number where they just rationalize why it isn't as bad as all of us, all of us know it to be. That was flat year over year at 2.8. So they didn't get it to go lower. But they were able to have it be flat. The headline PCE de deflator uh, actually was up a tick to 2.5. Uh, so, so a little, you know, a little tick up, but well within, you know, their, their I guess, new happy range. Durable good inflation. Uh, it picked up, inflation picked up for durable goods in February. Uh, the so-called super core. This is what I call home, or inflation for homeless people. Uh, because the super core is don't count shelter, don't count food, don't count energy. So apparently you just uh, live out in the desert or wherever you're living underneath the overpass. Uh, that, that also was flat. At 3.3 percent, uh, they did get a break because they said health care costs went down. I don't know that anybody would believe that, but that's what they said. And then also in the data today, spending, consumer spending up eight tenths of a percent. Uh, the problem was, Jason, 
Their incomes weren't up eight-tenths of a percent, so a huge drop in the savings rate, which, you know, again, signifying that, hey, the, the, the workers out there, we out there, uh, I know they said, now, get this, that they said headline inflation was three-tenths. We said it was eight-tenths, right, because, hey, we're the ones out there spending. Uh, but, but again, Jason, a big drop in the, the savings rate. You can't have that go on month after month for very long. So if consumer spending is up eight-tenths of a percent, but the inflation is 0.3 or 0.4 percent, isn't that half of the consumer uh, spending that, you know, isn't that half of it? <laughs> isn't, you know, if it's up eight tenths of a percent, isn't half of that at least going to be the inflation? Because you're spending well, eight tenths, or four tenths, or three tenths of a percent more. Shouldn't that, you know, it's, those are, you know, it's about those numbers. The numbers are so, you know, if you're spending more and you count that as numbers coming in, and, and you're right, Joe, I, why don't they decide that the, the Christmas spending uh, that, that's exaggerated. That's volatile. That's not normal. Why don't they just take that out of the numbers? But every time Christmas comes around, they love to add that to the GB, you know, the, uh, the the gross national product, right? They, they they like to add that in. But when it comes to inflation, oh, let's just take out the stuff that people just use every day. So I just, you know, you know me, Joe. The numbers always just kind of. Well, why don't they have colors? You know, every time there's fire danger in Colorado, and I think you have it there. They have the green, the yellow, and the red. Why don't they? Where do these numbers fall? I think point three is probably in the red zone, right? At least in the yellow zone, right? Then people might have well, to have some urgency to, to get this thing taken I, care I, of. I, I think what it really is signifying is this is how much they're understating inflation. They're saying three tenths. Spending says it's eight tenths. Let's face it. I don't think right. anybody, everybody out there, hey, I'm just putting the same amount of gas in. I'm making the same rent payments, right? But it's just everything costs more. 800-951-0592, Joe and Jason, Patriot News Hour on this Friday. Uh, uh, and again, all the markets are closed. So uh, looking at the Dow, the Dow closed uh, the month of March, 39,807. The S&P, 5254. Uh, the NASDAQ, 16,379. Gold, twenty. 234. So a gold closed yesterday, 2217. Rose another seventeen dollars uh in what we call the aftermarket trading at twenty two thirty-four. And, and by uh this inflation number, uh I don't see uh any reason why we probably We'll see higher gold prices when the markets reopen on Monday. Looks like, uh, you know, the, they didn't do anything to dissuade some rate cuts. The 10 year note, 421 crude oil. Yeah. $83 and change up a dollar 76 yesterday. And, uh, we're getting ready for drive season as that approaches. Uh, look for crude oil. Probably ninety to a hundred dollars a barrel uh, as the again inventories are are low. The government uh, took all that money out of the, all that oil out of the strategic oil reserve, and now uh, unfortunately they know they've got to start putting it back because the inventories are so low. Uh, yeah, they're putting it back at eighty plus dollars. So much that I know. Remember they sent out a, a no, we're going to fill it up at. 60 something then it was 72 now it's 79 you know it just keeps going up uh, it's, it's not a great situation but listen the year of chaos this is it for sure and get ready because look at what we talked about yesterday with the cbo so important they're warning you they're telling you hey Remember what happened in the UK. They elected a new prime minister. She gets into power. And they come up with this budget. They're going to spend all kinds of money. They had to throw her out of office. Why? Well, because the British Central Bank and the British, the British Treasury is like, yeah, there's no way we can sell that. We've got too much debt already. And the CBO yesterday said, hey, we're getting ready 
to be in that situation. And this is why we keep telling you, be diversified here. This is a bubble, pure and simple. We've seen this how many times in the past? And what has always been the solution? Print. Print, print, print. Look at how much we're sprinting now. Now, every 100 days, the CBO says the interest payments go up $100 billion. (laughs) Just the interest payments go up $100 billion. Right? In less than a couple of years, we're going to be paying $2 trillion in interest. And they're saying the ability to borrow is going to be greatly diminished. And that's why uh, we keep talking about why refi, because it's not correlated to Wall Street. Right? And, and, and again, how much time does Wall Street have left? That's anybody's guess. Is it next week, next month, next year? It's soon. Right, we know it's coming. You can get up to ten point two five percent fixed rate of return. It's not correlated to the stock market. Doesn't care about the Federal Reserve's inflation rate for homeless people. Uh, doesn't care about unemployment. Uh, doesn't care about the Easter Bunny either. If you've got fifty thousand dollars or more, I encourage you to check them out. You can use an existing IRA. Some of you can use a four hundred one k. That's investyrefi.com. The word invest, the letter Y R E F Y dot com, or just call them at eight 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 Y Refi twenty four. Now, having said all that, that's a lot. And now they're saying America's ability to borrow. It's starting to run out. Right? There's a limit. Right? This is what they're saying. Hey, there's a limit. Why do you think gold's doing what it's doing? Because the rest of the world, everybody knows, okay, this is, mm, yeah, we see. We can see it. Look at Japan. It's so bad. This, the Nikkei has now hit a new all-time high, finally taking out the high from 87. And guess what? They're in a currency crisis, right? They're having emergency meetings. Oh, my gosh. Well, we got to defend the yen. Against what, right? It's worthless. Right? Yeah, it's at an all-time high, but it's worthless. And this is what is happening everywhere. And you know the digital currency is coming. You know it. They can deny it or pretend it's not, but we know. Look at BlackRock, who now all of a sudden loves the 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 tokenization. They're starting to tokenize treasuries because they want the instant. We give you instant payments, right? The the back end stuff. It's already happening. I told you it was. How long till the retail stuff starts happening? How about this? And this is absolutely incredible. Uh, this was through uh, mater- uh, modern, modern news through Zero Hedge. Videos now are appearing showing FBI agents visiting people's homes to ask questions about social media postings. What? You're sending the FBI to people's homes? Here's what's interesting. The people, the first clip shows FBI uh, agents visiting a woman at her home in Stillwater, Oklahoma. She starts recording them and asks them to identify themselves. They refuse to do so while being filmed before claiming they had already shown the woman the woman there are their IDs. Now here's what's interesting. She also she's a smart lady. She filmed their license plates, filmed their car. Uh, they've confirmed that yes, they are FBI agents and yes, They're going to their homes. Here's what they said. 
We, what we'd like to do is have a conversation of, with you about some of your social media posts that you have made. Would you be willing to talk to us about that? The, women, the woman refuses without her lawyer presence before asking the agent for her contact information. Another agent just asked the woman to have her attorney contact the FBI office in Oklahoma City. It is told by one of the agents that Facebook had given us a couple of screenshots of your accounts. And then the woman asked, well, you can't arrest me for freedom of speech. We live in America. So it's kind of weird you want to you want to talk to me about exercising my free speech. The agents replied, "We do this every day, all day long. We talk to people. It's just an effort to keep everybody safe and make sure that nobody has any ill will or bad intentions or anything like that." And they said that uh, she, she, she asked the FBI a question. All the citizens in America who use uh, Facebook, you are currently uh, watching and seeing if you have some sort of, of concern. The, 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 uh, the, here's what's amazing. She was making some political statements. Uh, n nothing, nothing that... Uh, I would tell you would be deemed uh, to 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 be uh, like, hey, I want to kill the president. I mean, it wasn't stuff like that, Jason. And uh, local law enforcement has verified that the FBI, that the license plate of the vehicle was the an FBI license plate. And the lawyer informed me these instances are now common. The lawyer doesn't believe the FBI sent them the screenshots of my post. Rather, it seems like a fishing expedition. Do not fear them. My only concern, I told the cop, is someone in my state will do something or, or they would uh, use my post in a malicious attempt to smear me. Right, and, you know, so Jason, kind of interested in what's happening. Yeah, more uh, intrusions, right, of your privacy. Uh, more, uh, more trying to make you feel as small as can be, so that uh, what, whatever means is necessary to, to get you to comply to whatever is coming. Right, Joe. It's uh, this is almost a, a half empty cup of Joe type story here. I mean, this is this is one of those things that uh, is is uh, it shows people that uh, if you don't. You don't stand up for yourself and do, and do what's right, you know. And he, she did a good job, you know, asking for the ID and, and, and videotaping. I mean, unfortunately, that's uh, those are some of the weapons, I guess, if you want to call them that, that are used to try to uh, protect yourself in these situations. You know, yeah, the, any any law enforcement or any type of uh, government agency needs to identify themselves before they pull any anything against you. So. Uh, you know, it's one of those things, Joe, right? The, uh, the guy on the phone tells you who they are, and then you give them all your money, and suddenly it's like, oh, that guy wasn't what he said he was, and I gave him all my money, right? It's, unfortunately, a lot of old folks, they, uh, they go for that stuff. You just you got to know who you're dealing with, and if they don't, uh, then there's something wrong. Yeah, well, you know, the interesting part, why? because why, you're right. Normally this, wouldn't be, this would be a half-empty cup type article, but I really felt like today people need to hear this. You know, the, the the FBI at the door were saying, oh, yeah, this is what we do now every day, all day. Then her lawyer, so this one, we got, you got the lawyer, and what does the lawyer say? Yep. The, this is what they're doing now. They're going out, and, and, and really, and again, if they were saying things that, were, you know, hey, I'm going to kill people, I'm going to do this or that, right? By all means, right? But this wasn't that, right? This wasn't that. This was just more or less, really, what the government intimidating people, uh, letting you know that they're watching people. Of course, they led the, the woman to believe that it was Facebook 
that notified them. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what they kind of inference that, that, that Facebook was, was, was notifying them. But if they're already doing it now, right, this is what I'm saying. Now with a, a digital currency, just think about how easy this becomes now. Hey, we didn't like what you said. And we're going to freeze your accounts until we have a conversation, right? I mean, that's going to be the next logical step, isn't it, Jason? There's a lot of these uh, social networking pro- programs will shut you down for less than that, you know, right? You know, they don't, they're not going to call the FBI. They'll just shut you off. But you're right, shutting you off uh, and or uh, reporting you to some authorities to have you investigated, that's – one of the reasons I'm not on a lot of that stuff, at least not voluntarily. I mean, uh, maybe in the future for business reasons, maybe I start up a Facebook page for a business. But uh, personally, I, uh, a good old phone call still works for me, Joe. Right? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. When we get back, uh, we're coming up on the break here. I'm going to tell you what the USDA says is in store for food prices. And then... Something very interesting happening in New York where all of a sudden people don't have money to pay their property taxes. And the latest city to say they're out of money for illegal aliens. All coming up next. 510592 Joe and Jason. Patriot Radio News Hour on this Friday, a quiet, you know, supposed to be a quiet Friday. All the markets are closed, but man, we did get uh, a, a, a bevy of economic data, inflation data, then the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Uh, they wanted you to know what to expect for food prices. Uh, saying that, yep, almost all categories are still going to rise. But Jason, they got some good news for you. They're saying that uh, prices are going to rise at a slower pace. So, so there you go, right? Hey, it's, it, it won't be as bad bad as as last year. Uh, but they're expecting food prices in almost all categories uh, to continue to rise in in 2024. Uh, the, the, the one place where they said it could get, get, get a little better is maybe the fish and seafood uh, may cost a little bit less. Uh, but, but outside of that, uh, pretty much all of the apartments uh, were, 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 were higher in price. Uh, beef, veal, eggs, sugar, sweets, you know, all of those things. Uh, speaking of sweets, Hershey got downgraded yesterday their 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 credit rating got downgraded due to the huge increase in the cost of, of chocolate uh new york city now saying that property tax delinquencies are spiraling uh saying that uh, they're now a, a billion dollars in unpaid property taxes jumping 30% as the fiscal year it, which ends in June right as we talk about cities and states most cities and states their fiscal year ends in June city officials say they attribute this because the program that would punish delinquencies by allowing the city to sell the liens on homes and condos uh, after three years of non-payment but I guess the uh, that that has expired right so they had a deal where hey if you haven't paid in three years uh, we can sell the place and that's where the you know the government member they would sell and keep all the money. Uh, even if, like if you owed, let's just say as an example, you owed them twenty grand. They sell your house, and and, and you know they had expenses for. It. Let's say, let's just say, hey, all told, it, it cost them twenty five thousand dollars to sell your house. Uh, and by the time they paid off the taxes, if you had a mortgage uh, and all that stuff, all the money that was left over, the city was keeping, right? Instead of giving it back. 
to, to the owner after they had paid all their taxes and everything else. Uh, so now that that law has expired, but Jason, I don't think we should be surprised. People just don't have money. I mean, let's face it, at the end of the day, when you get the bills, you decide what you can pay and what you can't. Yeah, that's correct. And, uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of states, they'll let you not pay your property taxes for a while. They put a, a lien on you, and then, uh, uh, depending on the state, two years or three years of liens, and then it's done. You're gone. You know, we, how many times have, have we said, Joe, try not, do you really own your house? Uh, try not paying your property taxes. And uh, usually it's two to three years. You know, I'm not trying to tell anybody out there, don't pay your property taxes because, well, it's, it's like a snowball. You know, try, try paying three years of property taxes instead of just one. But, uh, yeah, you will lose your property. And yeah, those you know, those laws could be tough, Joe, for sure. I mean, it's uh, if you get, you get behind and you can't pay for stuff, they, they'll take everything. They'll just take everything. That's just an, it's and again, but why do I we were talking about it? money? The cities don't have any more. Remember, Houston's broke. You should see what Houston has to do. The money they've got to borrow, the interest that they have to pay, uh, just to try to keep the firefighters paid. Forget about police and everybody else because they want to get paid too. Uh, and now Moody's saying they may downgrade Baltimore. Uh, because of the bridge collapse disrupting aspects of the state of Maryland and the city of Baltimore. So both the state of Maryland and the city of Baltimore are now on credit watch because of the bridge collapse. Because, let's say it, Moody knows. Hey, listen, it's not like you guys got any money anyway. Uh, now you're going to get less. Yeah, that's going to be a problem. And then Tucson, the latest city to say we have no more money uh, for illegal aliens. So, Jason, now we're starting to get all these cities. Once they run out of money, right, what starts happening, right? They, they start booting them out of the shelters, busting them all over the country. But Tucson says... They've spent all the money that they were given from the federal government and, and don't have any left. And, and this is another growing problem that these cities are going to have to face, especially as their new budgets come in, right? You got a fiscal years for most of these cities and states starts July the 1st. They're already, already running big deficits. And now uh, cities are saying, hey, we don't have money. You, the government, hey, we don't have any more money to, to take care of. You know, when you let almost 4 million people in every single year, you're going to run out of money. <sighs> yeah, that is, that's the thing that we're seeing, Joe. But people are uh, people that were uh, saving a little bit, now we're not saving. People that couldn't save are not paying their bills. You know, it's just it just goes right up the line, right, Joe? People that were... Uh, investing, maybe aren't investing, maybe they're saving a little, right? It's, it's just, and, and the cities and the counties and the states are, are doing the same thing. They have their own budgets, right, Joe? And they're trying to figure out how they can make what they uh, pull in taxes uh, count for the for as far as they can go. But the thing about inflation, this is the, that's the, probably the, what you're bringing to the air, Joe, is, is the biggest thing about inflation. Yeah, everyone puts a budget. You know, the average average entity, whether it be a, a homeowner or, a, you know, a a mom and a dad and a family, or whether it be the, your, your local town or city or state, you put your budget together because here's what we're earning and bringing in, and here's what we spend. And what we spend is going up. You just said, oh, the good news is the amount it's going to go up is going to be less. That was the good news. It's going to go up, but it's going to go up less than it's been going up. Right. You know, if, if you're doing a budget, you better start budgeting. You're going to have to pay more in three months. You're going to have to pay more in six months. You're going to have to pay more in nine months. It used to be a little bit of inflation maybe every year. If you're really smart, you'd, you'd budget for yearly inflation. But now, Joe, Joe, you really probably should be looking at the three- to six-month budgeting for inflation. I mean, I know my stuff's gone up pretty much every three months for the last two years, Joe. Yeah, and, and again, I think it's just disappointing to – uh, here the, you know, when you really think about it, the Federal Reserve hasn't raised rates since last summer. Yep. And, and keep telling us, oh, we want, we want inflation to go back to 2%, but we want it to do it gradually. 
I didn't know that said that in the man, uh, in the mandate. Apparently, I, I I I just missed that part in the mandate where they said it's okay if you're way above where we're supposed to be, as long as it's coming down gradually. Then apparently that's okay. Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back right after. 800-951-0592, Joe and Jason, on this Good Friday wrapping up the week. Uh, gold at a new all-time record high. It was like the 7th of the month of March, uh, $2,234. Uh, I'm going to have a the, the Good Friday Easter special, $20 gold pieces, Two thousand three hundred ninety-five dollars in any quantity. Two thousand three hundred ninety-five dollars. Uh, that's that's like the only ounce of gold or any gold, that really, Jason. You're gonna get uh, for under twenty-four hundred bucks now. I mean, that's just that's just where things are at right now. What was that price again? Twenty dollars liberties for how much? Twenty-three ninety-five. So that's a fifty-five. Dollar savings. Uh, I'll have that on the shopping cart uh, as well. And you know, we don't know. Obviously, Jason, we don't know what will happen uh, on on Monday. But but with this inflation report, the Fed now has what, what another four weeks where they can say, "Hey, you know, we're still on track for rate cuts," and you know, it, it didn't get it didn't get any better. But inflation, at least year over year, didn't get any worse, Jason. Yeah, we don't know what will happen Monday, Joe. Um, uh, but inflation will get worse. Uh, if we have a pullback in gold on Monday, I think it will be short-lived. Uh, I, I believe uh, if, it goes, if, it, if we have a pullback on Monday, it goes up every day the rest of the week. Uh, if gold goes up on Monday, I could see gold going up every single day and uh, essentially trying to leave 2200 behind in, in one week. Uh, we just, we didn't even twenty one hundred didn't even exist, you know. It was just a, you know a little over a week in in March, you know, two weeks in March, and now now we're in twenty two hundred. Now I don't know if we'll stay here. Things can go sideways for a little while, but with the prices of everything going up the way they are, and gold being a leading indicator of inflation, and I see inflation getting worse. Uh, then twenty twenty two hundred gold, which I mean, we just ran right up into it right yesterday, right, Joe? Just just like okay, here we are. It was a bit a big surprise, and it was twenty it was a twenty two thirty four for gold. Well, I ain't very far from twenty three hundred gold. So we'll see if there's a pullback. If there's a pullback, it just means that gold will stay in the twenty two hundred range because I, I believe it'll go up the rest of the week. If it goes up Monday, Joe, Jay, well, just watch out, watch out. We're you know, it's April. We're going to be in April next week. Yeah, and. Just remember, this this has kind of been a pattern, right? Gold, gold's kind of you know, gold always has to prove it. We were we had hit two thousand. What in twenty 2020, twenty, twenty twenty one, twenty twenty two, right? And it could never stay there. And then remember in January, I told you up, oh, gold got comfortable over two thousand. And it was between what two thousand and like two thousand and forty dollars, right? And I and we we were telling you, March, 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 March. Wait for March, buy it, buy it, buy it. And now all of a sudden, right? It, it's off to the races. It, and again, because for the last. You know, first of all, it was COVID, and then, then you know, 2021 rolls around, and, and, well, you know, yeah, inflation's bad, but it's not that bad, and then, of course, it got real bad, but then it was going to get better, and, you know, the Fed was raising rates, holding gold back, now that's over, and when you start to look at what's ahead, the ability to borrow, is infringed right now, greatly infringed. Right, we're kind of man. How much? How much more rope is there really? The Fed unable to raise rates any higher. Matter of fact, they know it's a matter of time before they're forced to lower rates. We're going to have the the slowing of quantitative tightening. Uh, you you you're seeing it in the numbers, right? The economy is slowing we, we, that that 
is a certainty, right? And now, uh, and also, right, it seems like every week now, it's another city or another state saying, uh-oh, revenue wasn't what we thought. We got this huge deficit running into next year, and now we're going to have to cut all this spending. And, and then, of course, the federal government continues to still spend. Gold's on a very good path here. And, and you know, we had that same problem at $1,000 gold. Gold kind of sat there, fell back, and then when it finally busted through, what, it went all the way to, like, 1900 Right, and, and and this is kind of the same feeling I, I kind of have here. Don't be surprised if we end up on a run where, hey, it's not, it's not a straight line. Okay, it's not going to go up every day. But by the time this thing stops, don't be surprised at twenty five hundred. Don't be if it goes really bad. Don't be surprised at three thousand, Jason. 3,000 gold is not that hard to get to. It's really not. Uh, I mean, that could happen this year. 4,000 gold could happen in, in one year. That could happen this year. Uh, it has uh, a lot of factors involved than just uh, inflation and, and American economics and whatnot. But but you throw in a couple of emergencies, like a few more bridges going down uh, and, and, and uh, another war flaring up and, you know, spend, 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 and, and suddenly you got gold at $3,500. And, uh, with the premiums, you're spending forty five hundred dollars for this ounce of gold, and uh, there's nothing worry. There's nothing we can do about it. We're the uh, retailer. We're going to sell it to you. You know, we get we get it in your hands as cheaply and as fast as we can, but you're the one that has to figure out when to buy it. And you can wait. You know, you can definitely wait. But if you got, you wait if you have no savings to put into it. If you have no money sitting in the bank, that's fine. We get it. But if you got something that's not working or you have money just sitting there. It needs to be sitting in this. You need to have your gold sitting wherever you're going to put it. Listen, I'm going to tell you right now, the one good news is premiums are, are very affordable right now. I mean, uh, you know, look at even today. With, and granted, it's a big special, $2,395. Gold's at $2,200. I mean, it's like $160 over spot. That's nothing. Take advantage of low premiums. 800 951 Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Uh, wrapping up another uh, big week for gold. Uh, the best month for gold going back to COVID. Um, and and again, I think this is just kind of like it's it's almost like the everything rally, isn't it? Right? It, it doesn't kind of if it's real, it, it's it's moving. Uh, don't forget. Obviously, for a lot of people out there, I get it. Twenty three hundred and ninety five dollars—it's a lot of money. Twenty three hundred ninety five dollars, a lot of money. But when you look at where gold is right now, not really. Right? It's actually pretty darn good value uh, because when you know the stock market starts to have problems, uh, layoffs finally start showing up in jobless claims. Right? All all of a sudden. It, it's real quick, right? When the the bubble starts going the other way, uh, and then and then uh, the the fear, when, you know, when when gold when, when there's fear, gold premiums really get expensive. Take advantage of the low premiums if you have the means to do so. I'm still running those silver quarters. I'm keeping that same price, right at two hundred bucks. It's a great opportunity to get into the silver market on those silver quarters. All of these prices will be available on our website at allamericangold.com throughout the weekend. And don't forget, for a lot of you people, hey, I've got my money. i got money, but it, but it's in my IRA or, or you know, it, it's locked up there. We do precious metals IRAs. We do them all the time. Uh, obviously, you're not allowed to put the old gold in there, but... Listen, you can put 10-ounce gold eagles in there. You can put silver eagles in there. Things that, that, hey, if things get really bad. The one cool thing about the IRAs is you can take physical possession. It would be just like you were selling, right? Hey, I'm going to, you know what? I need that gold and silver close to home. I'm going to sell, I'm going to, I'm going to take possession of part of it. 
right? If you're over the age of 59 and a half, there's no penalties. You got to you got to pay your tax like you would any IRA on the part you take possession of. But Jason, it's a great alternative for some people that hey, you know, I, I, I've got money, but it's in an IRA. I don't have, you know. I just make enough or I get enough income coming in to pay my bills every month, but I want some exposure to go. It's a great way to do it. And you can pick the amount, right? Hey, you may have, maybe you got a, an IRA of 500000 and you say, well, I'm, I'm going to put 100000 into gold and silver. Whatever the case may be, uh, we can help people do that. Yeah, gold, uh, too expensive to buy. I, maybe it's uh, too expensive not to buy. Uh, you know, I, I came on board of Patriot in 2018. We were selling these coins for 1250 bucks, and it was too expensive to buy. Really? It's too expensive not to buy. How's that? Yeah, it, it's, uh, it, it takes a lot of intentional fortitude, and you got to really put a lot of money to, into that uh, savings device. But once you get it in there, you put it away. You don't have to, you know, a lot of investments, you have to sit there and look at it. And a lot of people, they put their money in these, some of these investments. They go up, they go down. They, you know, they, the company has bad news. You know, they fire workers. You just, you just don't know what's going to happen with it. Uh, never mind other uh, investments that just go skyrocketing up and down constantly. At least with gold, once, once you stop looking at the, at the spot price every single day, when, you, when people like first get into it, they like to look at it every day. One, it gets boring. It gets tiresome. Oh, it went up. Five bucks today. Oh, that's kind of boring. Oh, it went down two dollars today. That's kind of boring. Well, it's nice and boring and safe, and it makes all the customers that I meet with Joe. They're the most relaxed, comfortable people I've ever met. Financially, they're much more happy with where they're at because they've saved it in the right place, Joe. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Jason and I we're coming right back with the Friday edition of the Half.